this is how to become the strongest player on your SMP or just a way of getting very good gear. This inventory or similar is the goal and here's the fastest way to get it. The steps are as follows. We need to find a village, obtain the diamonds, get the enchantments, and go to the nether. In the nether we grab potions, ancient debris, and gold. Finally, we explore until we find a pillager outpost to get totems of undying. It's a simple process, but depending on how you go through it, it could take much longer than it needs to. This process was designed to be as seamless and efficient as possible. The whole purpose of this video is to make you PvP ready on your SMP, so it's most likely not the safest place for bases and stuff. Going far away from spawn before settling down at a village is not a bad idea. Before we settle down, it's also very important that we come prepared for trading and securing our villagers. Getting leather and sugarcane for books and wool for beds on the way is essential. For reference, I used about 50 leather for my playthrough. You also want spruce saplings if possible, since the 2x2 two two trees are the best way to get wood and emeralds from Fletchers. Final things, a diamond axe and an anvil. The axe for chopping and the anvil for enchanting. Finding a village is pretty much all down to luck, but there are certain things you can do to boost your chances. Villages will only spawn in six biomes. Plains, savanna, taiga, snowy plains, desert biomes, and the newly introduced meadow. Eventually we'll come across a village and the first thing to do there is to secure our villagers. Take all the beds and put them in the center of the village and then wait for night. All the villagers should go to the beds and are now in a position to be easily protected. After that is done, the next thing is to farm. We need sugarcane, carrots, wood, and more villagers. We gotta breed more villagers, so place a ton of extra beds and give the villagers food so they can breed. 3 bread or 12 vegetables is needed for each villager to breed. Progressively, as the number of villagers increases, turn some of them into librarians and some of them into fletchers. If you're just doing a short PvP fight, the bare minimum of enchantments would be protection for and sharpness 5, but you should really get more than that. I personally opt for protection, unbreaking, mending on all the armor, sharpness, fire, and looting on the sword, and fortune and efficiency for getting resources. If you're doing heavy PvP, get those 100%. I excluded things like Depth Strider and Aqua Affinity because they're not as essential like protection and sharpness. They're part of a god set but will make minimal difference in PvP. Quick villager advice, use a simple villager cell like this. To trade quickly, shift click the trade out and then press space and more items from your inventory will be added to the trade menu. Finally, if a villager ever raises his prices, don't trade with him and wait for the trades to go down. Typically, this only takes around a day. Diamonds. In total, it's 24 diamonds for the armor and 5 more for a diamond pickaxe in sword. If you manage to roll a fortune 3 villager early, great, use it to mine diamonds quickly. But if it's taking a long time to get a fortune 3 villager, just go mining without it. Emeralds. In my final statistics count of the world, I obtained a total of 900 emeralds throughout playing. That equates to 3600 logs, a full double chest. This is easily the longest portion of farming, but it's the fastest way in comparison to other methods of getting emeralds at the early game. As we trade with the villagers, we're going to get a ton of XP and it's very important that we use it efficiently. Use XP as soon as you get it so you don't reach high levels. And then we just repeat, get wood, trade for emeralds, trade for books, enchant the armor and the tools. And here's our finished set of PvP ready tools and armor. In the nether, our three goals are simple. Potions, ancient debris, and gold. For most PvP, the only potions you need are swiftness, strength, and fire resistance. We'll need blaze rods, glowstone, magma cream, and nether wart. Gold is going to be necessary for gapples. The 1.18 PvP meta is heavily reliant on saturation and gapple usage, meaning we'll burn through them very quickly in an intense battle. I only went for 32 gapples, which is pretty good but could run out in a drawn out battle, but 64 would cover most fights. There are some cleric villager items which we want to obtain as well. Bottles of enchanting and ender pearls. So to level them up, one to two extra stacks of gold is super useful. I covered ancient debris in my previous video so I won't say too much, but chunk borders at Y equals 15. Only need 20 this time though for the armor and the sword. With those things collected, we're done with the nether for now and there's a bit more villager training to do. Armor durability with unbreaking three still runs out extremely quickly in the slug fests of netherite PVP. So it's good to have bottles of enchanting to mend the gear when it gets low. With a cleric villager, buy redstone until the cleric is tiered to level 2 and then max out the gold trait. Then purchase 2 more glowstone to get it to the next tier and then buy ender pearls or sell glass bottles to get him to master tier where you can buy bottles of enchanting. We also need a farmer villager with an apple trade to get golden apples. You could farm oak trees like I did and end up with like 2 stacks of apples but a farmer villager is the way to go if you've been farming spruce. Final thing to do at the base is to brew our 
potions and apply our netherite onto our armor. And now we set off for totems. Totems are drops from evokers either in raids or woodland mansions. Searching for a pillager outpost is much easier than a mansion, so I'd recommend that. Pillager outposts must generate with a village nearby, so make sure you're in valid terrain for villages to spawn. Once you find one, get bad omen, find the village it's linked to, and do the raid there. You should get a few totems for beating it successfully. And with the totems, we are officially PvP ready. Thank you for watching.